SQLite is more powerful than you think, and to prove you that, I have five features for you. Let's see the first one. The first feature is the attach. In this video, I will assume that you are familiar with SQLite. If you are not, the TLDR version is that SQLite is a lightweight version of SQL, something that you can run a database as a single file inside of a machine, and you can run some queries on top of it, but you will get the gist out of it from this video, but then I invite you to take a look online because it's an amazing technology. So let's go in with the first demo. And I will first show you the attach working, and then I will explain it the benefits and the typical use cases where you can take advantage of it, but you will get most of that from the demo. So first thing that you need to do, once you have SQLite installed, what you can do is go to SQLite and provide the name of the database that you want to work on. So for example, I will do SQLite 3 Retail Store DB. I don't have this database yet. This will basically start the process of creating it. And now in the same way that we do it on the SQL database, I can start running queries, but I will do it through the terminal. So the first thing that I will do is to create a table. How do you create a table? Just run the, the SQL statement for that. Create table, customers, ID, name, and email. And then you say that you want to terminate the statement. Just that. Once you do that, you can start performing the insert statement. So you can see it's quite simple. Just run the statements that you want. And if now I do the select star from customers, you can see that I get both records that I just inserted. So let me clear the window. By the way, if you want to clear the window, this one is a free tip for you. You just do the uh, dot shell space and clear okay at least on mac os i know that is this way if you are on windows maybe the instruction is slightly different maybe it's the cls or something like that so what do i know currently i'm inside of that database that i just created that has the customers but i want to attach to a different database to show you the feature so the attach is something like this you run the attach database salesanalytics.db, okay? This one is a different database. You just point to the file that you want to attach to. If that file doesn't exist, don't worry, it will be created. And then I will provide an alias to work with that database. So every single time that I want to refer to something inside of that specific database, I will use these aliases. So once you have this, what can you do? I can, for example, create a new table inside of that uh, different database, different alias. What does that mean? It means that if I want to perform a select from that database and I run the statement like this, so I want to select from the daily sales, sorry, let's first add some data. So now that we added some data, I can perform the select and I have the select star from daily sales. But at the same time, I can perform the select star from customers. Okay, I have access to both, but they are in different spaces. What if I have the same concept in both databases? I can always use that al aliases. For example, if I go here and I say that I want from the analytics.customers, I will get an error because the customers is not part of that um, specific database. However, I can do the analytics dot daily sales, just that. So let me clear this thing once again. And why is this thing cool? Because let's imagine, let's say that I want to create a different table inside of my main database, the first database that I just created for products, okay? I have products. And now I want to relate those products to the data that is part of the analytics database. So I can start performing joins with two different files. So with this, now I can perform something like this. Okay, I want to join the analytics.daily sales with the products. This will give you the records joined between those two um, databases. And why would you care about this? If you come from something like SQL Server, you know that you can query two different tables in two different databases as far as they are part of the same server. Okay, I'm not sure if you can do it 
you through multiple servers. Honestly, I don't know, but you can, at least if they are part of the same server, you have ways to do it. So if you want to have the same experience with SQLite, you can do it. Typical use cases for this. One of them is to segregate the information. Imagine that you want to have, for example, the application data and the application configurations as part of two different files. Okay, you can do that that way. And then when you are performing the query and you still need to join data, do a cross join between those two files, you can do it with the attach. Another typical scenario is when you are performing a migration from one file to another file. Okay, you can open the connection to one file and perform the queries to move data to the other file. Okay, as far as you first perform the attach. Because as you will see, if I exit, this window, and now I perform an LS, you can see that I have two different database files, okay? The retail store and the salesanalytics.tv. And since we mentioned migrations, let me show you another one that I really like. This one is the insert mode. So you know when you are working with a database and you want to select some entries from that uh, table because you want to perform an insert in a different place. Sometimes you can try to do tricks like this. For example, you try to perform a select of that table, for example, from the customers, while in the output, in the output of the select statement, you will compose the insert into statement. So you can do that by then starting to collashing the, the values from the columns and having the insert statement and all of that. By the way, you copy all of that output and you try to run in a different place, okay? That happens a lot, especially when you are performing migrations or you are trying to build a set of, um, for example, uh, mock data for your tests, for a demo, for things like that. What if I told you that there's an easy way to do that with SQLite that I really enjoy? And that is the insert mode. Let me show you that. Let's bring a new uh, database and I will create a table and also insert some data into th that table. Okay, so if we select star from customers, you can see the typical output with the different columns uh, of that customer's table. But I can do something different. Let's just clear this thing. So if I want to perform that type of query that I showed you before, I can simply do this. So I can say mode insert. Once I do this, what will happen is that I can perform the same select start from customers and look what happened, okay? Insert into table values and the different values that are part of the customer's table, okay? And now we will say, okay, but I don't want to insert it into something named table. What can I do? Instead of running the mold insert, I can provide a new name for that table. For example, let's say that I want to insert into a premium customer's uh, table, okay? So I can do this, what means that I can perform a query specific for the account type premium. And now I will only generate the insert statements for the premium customers. So now if you think about this, this is also great when you combine with the attach feature, because now if you want to move data, a subset of the data into a different database file, you can just attach those databases, start the insert mode and move data across by generating those simple insert statements with the things that you want. And the cool thing is that you don't need to start thinking about collashing those values, being worried if you have the commas or the curly braces, the brackets and all of that stuff, okay, because it too will basically do it for you. Next one is in memory databases. This one is pretty cool for small things like trying to explore SQLite or something a bit more productive like testing. So when you are testing and for that you bring something like SQLite in place, it's a common approach for things like trying to replace a given technology that you don't have uh, for the sake of tests. So you try to bring a SQLite database and you test against, against it, you do your assertions because it's basically replacing the database that you are using in your day-to-day. -day. So imagine that you are in one of those cases, likely you are doing something like this. You have your SQL connection. By the way, I was showing this to you 
using C Sharp. The same thing applies to other technologies as, as well, okay? Doesn't matter. If you are using SQLite for the sake of testing, you might have this problem, so just keep watching. So you perform the connection to that database. To do that, you will say that the data source is a given file, test.db. But once you do this, you need to think about things like the following ones. First, you need to have a setup of your tests. For example, creating the tables that you need, inserting data that is the starting point for your tests, so arranging the data. And now you need to think about other things. That is, since you created a file, next time that you run this, maybe that table is already there. Maybe that data is already there, okay? So you need to start thinking about those cases. For example, when you create a table, likely we'll need to do something like the if not exists. But then, if you don't think about that on this insert statements, now it might be a problem because the ID is a primary key. So the next time that I run, even if this doesn't fail, this might fail. So you need to think about all of that stuff. You need to think about collisions. You need to think about how do you have this thing inside of your pipeline. You need to think about all of that stuff. But if I told you that that's an easy way to avoid all of that, okay? That's an easy way to even avoid going to the file system. There's an easy way to make these tests even more performant because you are avoiding going through the I.O. How do you do that? It's quite simple. You just need to come here and say memory. Because if you do that, what will happen is that you'll be using SQLite in memory. And even then, if you run your tests, they will succeed. Biggest advantage of this is that I don't need to think about this type of stuff like the if not exists and all of that, because the database will be in memory, okay? I don't have those collisions. It will become so much easier to set up your tests and avoid all of that nightmare of sharing a single file. And by the way, since it's in memory, you also don't need to think about those cleanups that you need to do by the end of your tests to throw away things from the previous test run because it will, since it's in memory, it will disappear. Next one is strict tables. I'm not sure if you are aware of that, but SQLite has a dynamic type system, kind of like JavaScript, okay? So it doesn't care a lot about the types that you define when you create a table, but sometimes we want to enforce those. The good news is that you can do that with uh, strict tables. And let me show you how to do that. So once again, let's create our database. And here I will create two different tables. They are kind of like the same. Only one thing will change and I will show you. So notice here, I have the create table product strict. And by the end, I'm defining the strict keyword. And also I have the create table products regular and there I don't do that, okay? But besides that, it's exactly the same, okay? I don't think too much about it. And why do I care about that? So let's run the following insert statement. So if I run this insert statement for the regular table, the one that doesn't have the strict types, and if for the quantity that is an int, I insert a string, nothing happens. And even then, if I try to select data from that table, what will happen is that even then it will return data. But I want to do something different. I want my system to tell me that this shouldn't happen. And the way that I can do that is by using this strict keyword. Once I do that, if I try to perform exactly the same insert into the other table, the strict table, with the 15, okay, the string instead of the int, what we'll say is that I cannot store a text in an int column product strict quantity. That's exactly what I want. So why do I care about this? If I really want to make sure that I don't have any of those type of bugs that will go silently without noticing, this is quite simple. You just need to perform the strict keyword, okay? The cool thing is that this even works for other types of constraints. Let me show you. Let me first clear, and then let's create a different table. On that table, I will have this status that has a check, and the check will make sure that the status is in the uh, following values. It's pending, shipped, or delivered. So if I try to perform this insert where the status is processing, it will fail with a constraint check. But if I try to do it with pending, it's inserted. So if I perform the select, start from orders strict, I have the pending, I don't have the other one that was processing. So quite simple, extremely powerful, and one of those things that often you don't notice if you don't 
take a look on how SQLite is built. Next one is the import. That is one of my favorites because I love SQL and sometimes doing small things on top of CSV can be a lot of work like importing that file into Excel, trying to split those columns, then using pivot tables, or even trying to build a parser. And SQLite is quite simple to bring that CSV on and start working on it. So before going to your ID and start building a parser, do the following. First thing, create a database, okay? Once you have that file, create a table with the columns that you will expect from that CSV file. Once you have the table, what you'll do is that you'll run the import, and the import can accept the CSV mode, but also I will say, please skip one. So I'm skipping the first row. Based on that, what I want to do is to paste the path to my file and then say the name of the table where I will uh, write that data. So basically I'm saying, please import the CSV, except the first row into this transactions table. Run that, and now you can run the command, the select statement to, to get that data. So if we do that, you can see the data here. Let's just change the mode to table, because this way, once we run the query, we can see it perfectly. So that means that we can start running queries on top of this. For example, I want to make sure that I have the amount of data that should be there. So select from transactions. I have 18 entries, what is correct. So I have line 19 minus one. So that's perfect. What means that I can start doing things like this. For example, trying to group data uh, by month. And once I do that, I can have the total of debits and total of credits per month, for example. So you can see the types of things that now you can start doing. When often to work with something like a CSV, we go through a lot of hoops when we can simply use SQLite and run some SQL statements on top of it. By the way, bonus tip, if you want to output the results of this query, for example, into another CSV, you can do it. And now can you do it? You can set the headers. So let me first clear this shell clear on. Then what I will do is that I will change the mode to CSV. And once I have that, I will say output. So we already tried with the input. Now I'm setting it to the output. And I will say that is the monthly summary dot CSV, for example. Run the query that you want. And if now you go there, you can find the file, okay? It's there. Basically, the output of that query went directly into that file. Just that. So, what do you say? Isn't SQLite more powerful than you were thinking? Please leave a comment saying, what do you think now? And if I changed your impression of SQLite, and let me tell you, SQLite is widely used out there. So maybe next time, think if it's not the best technology for the thing that you're trying to build. Because maybe, it is. And until that day, make sure that you watch this video right here. And I will see you in the next one.